I'm here today with uh, Dr. Greg Stevenson from Rochester College. I'm excited that Greg is going to be our resource scholar for the study of Revelation this year. Can I get a witness at the uh, 70th Pepperdine Lectureship? And uh, Greg, I wanted to ask you, why is it that we've been so reluctant to study Revelation? I've, I've already had several buddies tell me, you know, I've never preached through Revelation. So what, what do you think that is? Well, I mean, I think uh, on one level, the obvious answer is it's just a very intimidating book. Um, and, and I think a lot of that intimidating factor, you know, people are intimidated by it because they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of that just comes, I think, from the fact that it's so foreign to us. Um, which is kind of odd because in, in one sense, you know, people think of Revelation as being a unique book, kind of one of a kind. Yeah. Uh, when in fact, it's actually, you know, one example of a fairly established literary genre, you know, known as, as apocalypses that were commonly written for about a period of 400 years, uh, particularly by the Jewish people. Um, and yet the problem is it's a literary genre that, you know, ended early on in the uh, early years of the Christian uh, movement and so it's a genre that we don't produce anymore and so you know we're familiar with letters we know how to read those we understand how to read stories but people don't write apocalypses anymore uh, and so we've kind of lost that sense of, of how to make sense of this kind of literature we you know we've forgotten the rules of how an apocalypse communicates uh, which is, is one of the things I think that, that makes it so intimidating to us and another thing I think is that people have this perception that the book of Revelation is simply about the end uh, and so it's something about, you know, it's, it's about something that's out there that's not immediately relevant to our lives today. And so it's almost seen as something that can be It's just one good north. sermon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's one good sermon. The end is coming. God wins. Yeah, that's all you need to get across. And so, you know, there's so much meat uh, in that book that I think just gets ignored, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, tell me what your hope would be uh, in a study like this. What would you hope we could accomplish? What, in, in your mind, what does Revelation <clears throat> hold open for uh, for individuals and churches in a study like this? Well, I think there are several things that are really uh, important about this, and it's you know part of the reason I'm really excited you're doing this. I've often lamented the fact that nobody seems to do Revelation in, in contexts like this. Uh, and I think it's really needed, again, because you know it's largely been ignored in churches, particularly in, in our tradition. Uh, and I think that's very important, fortunate, because I hope what people will take out of this is that, at least in my estimation, I think... Revelation is one of the most relevant books for the churches today because uh, the issues that it addresses are the things that the churches are struggling with. I mean, it's a book that, that really engages uh, kind of the conflict that we have between you know, what our faith tells us is true about the world and what our experience tells us is true and how those two don't often, often uh, mesh well. It's a book that deals with how we think about human suffering, how we think about evil in the world. Uh, it's a book very much about, uh, for instance, how we... Um, witness faithfully in the world, you know, as the, as the title yeah, indicates. Yeah, get a witness, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think also very important, I hope people will take from this that, you know, again, rather than being a book that's simply about the end, it's a book that's very much about the living out of Christian faith in the world today. And it's like, as, as John says in the book, um, you know, he calls his book several times a work of prophecy. And then in chapter 19, he says that the, the, that the testimony of Jesus, the witness of Jesus, is the spirit of prophecy. And in that, he's making the point that I think is pretty clear that the book of Revelation is really about Jesus from beginning to end. You know, Jesus is what is revealed in the book of Revelation. Uh, and so I'm very hopeful that people will take that away from it. And one other thing I think that's important is the recognition that the book of Revelation is a book about hope. Hmm. Uh, people usually think of Revelation as being about destruction, the end of the world, you know, things coming to, to conclusion, Armageddon. finality. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and really, it's, it's more about a new beginning. Uh, in apocalypses, um, sort of beginnings, new beginnings always follow endings. And so you have, you know, the book of Revelation ends with new creation. Uh, and God is, is presented in Revelation as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning to end. And it's really a book that's about that whole story. Right? From the Alpha to the Omega, what is God doing? And it's about how God is active in creation all the way from beginning to end and faithfully engaging this world uh, that he has created. And it ends with that, that sense of hope of new creation and a new beginning uh, that we are, you know, privileged to be a part of. I, I love that idea. I hope that's part of what's accomplished at Lectureship this year is we grab a hold of this this message of Revelation, no longer embarrassed about it, tucking it away at the end, but seeing it as a valuable resource for who the church is wanting and needs to be today. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, thanks so much. Greg Stevenson from Rochester College. Looking forward to uh, learning a lot from him at uh, the Lectureship. Thanks, Greg. Thank you.